Welcome to Get Inspired, the podcast by Go Hard for God Daily. This is where we display the life of believers. We share and teach the gospel with practical living. We be real, we be honest, and we be open. And encourage you to be the authentic version of you that God created. Welcome to Get Inspired. Now let's get into the episode for today. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Kirby Love, CEO and founder of Go Hard For God Daily. Welcome back to another episode of Get Inspired Podcast. This is the podcast for Go Hard For God Daily. Um, and I have a guest with me today. But before we allow the guest to introduce herself, uh, I just want to let, let you guys know up front, because people will be asking for the merch, you can go to www.ghfgd.com and find the merch, the shirt, the joggers, whatever it is that you're looking for, just go over to the website, all the information is there. And if you want to be on the podcast, if you have a story to tell, then you can also go to the website, hit the Get Inspired tab, fill out the form, and then we look forward to connecting with you so that you may be a potential guest on one of the future episodes that we have right here on Get Inspired. All right, but you guys know how we do. We don't waste time. We jump right into exactly what we're going to be talking about. So today, I'm going to allow my guest to introduce herself hey everybody i'm courtney and i'm a student at albany state university Woo! albany state <laughs> asu golden ram in the house up. all right so how long have you been at albany state i've been at albany state i'm a super senior so <laughs> super senior i ain't never heard of a super senior it's pl- Go ahead, finish, but you got to explain what a super senior is. <laughs> I've been at Albany State for now five, no, about to be five years. I'm going to say four years now. Uh, I say super senior because, like, I'm supposed to have graduated May, and now I'm graduating next year, so. So so what's what's the delay? What's What causes? The, the delay? Honestly, truthfully, I changed my major, like, three, four times. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I came in as nursing. Then I went over to like, uh, oh, music education. Yeah. And then I went to music. And then I changed to business management. And I, okay, I think I like it now. So that's where I'm at. But I, it, put me, it put me back some semesters. So you've been majoring in the minors, but now you're majoring in the major. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can explain that another time. But uh, that is good. Um, it's, it's a good thing that you're actually pursuing something. There are some people out here who ain't doing nothing so congratulations to you uh y'all make sure you drop a comment or something so we can congratulate courtney on her college journey so but you're almost done though right yes i am almost done uh i graduate may 2024 Uh, i'm ready to be done so hopefully this is my last that's my last semester in may um so yeah so are you are you going to school again? Or are you oh, done uh-uh. with school? <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Uh uh-uh. uh. I'm done. I'm ready to just. I don't know. I'm ready for something else. I always had that feeling like there's something more. Yeah. And I felt that way like for a couple of years now while being there. Like a lot has a lot has happened there. And I then I like as I grow older I'm like there's something more. So mm-hmm. I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah yeah. Well, once I got done with school, it was a. Uh, no brainer for me. No more school. I'm done. Yeah. So when you say you're ready for something else, is there something else um, what you're majoring in? Like, are you are you trying to transition into nursing, or is it just I'm done with school? We we'll just figure it out. Or you like where, where are you at with the something else? Are you do you already have plans or what? Okay, so um, I want to go into. I just want to go, like I'm in business management, so I just want to do entrepreneurship. Like. I, I just want to be a full-time entrepreneur, just okay. travel the world, preach the stuff I've been doing. Um, but, like, without me having a, oh, I got to go back to school, so I can't go here, there. Like, I just, I think that's just something more, like, that want to travel and be out on foreign land, be out, just out of even Georgia. Like, yeah. I don't go much outside of Georgia. So, I'm just ready to, like, go beyond here and meet new people, try new things, eat good food. Eat good food. So <laughs> you, I, I like, you added one thing in there about preaching, entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. So that's, it's a good thing in the marketplace. You have a minister in the marketplace, which that's another conversation we can have, marketplace ministry, because that is a real thing. Yeah. And um, some people kind of want to separate that, but we're not going to die too far over there. Okay. All right. <laughs> but um, traveling, eating good food sounds like you are a foodie. Yes. To- <laughs> 
I love food. Like I've been looking at, I just like started living in the city um, for this internship I'm at. So like I've been looking at different places. I want to try this one place. And, but my friends keep like flaking on me every time I'm like, let's go. So I'm finna just go there by myself. Yeah, you might have to go solo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cause they, they obviously don't want to eat good. And you yeah. do. And you don't need people who don't want to eat good around <laughs> you, right? Right. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's all good though. Um, but one of the things that we do, we get into uh, with, with every guest who comes on the Get Inspired podcast is getting, we, we talk about the coming to Christ story, like how they t- come to Christ, right? We allow everybody to have that moment that space to say how they came to christ so i want to know and i want you to share that with our audience so that they can know a little bit of your story your background about how like what led you to christ okay um well where do i start all right um so i grew up in the church because my parents are pastors um my dad um actually like during as i was growing up he transitioned to be a bishop Mm -hmm. um my mom was a minister and so we always was in church 24 seven, you know, you got that Bible study, you got yep. choir rehearsal. And yep. then my mom, like, it wasn't only choir rehearsal, like I was also the praise and worship leader. So Uh-oh. I just had to get the songs together. And then um, they had me over the youth ministry. So I'm just doing everything in the church. <laughs> yeah. Um, and growing up that way, like it was, it, they always used to say, my parents always used to say when they would do interviews and they would talk to people, they would say, our children never said they, ne- they never wanted to go to church. But it's kind of like that thing, like, I couldn't say I didn't want to go. Right. You made me go. So <laughs> you made me go. And I'm I there y'all anyway. Wasn't, exactly. Yeah. Y'all, I knew y'all wasn't going to say I couldn't go. Right. Um, and so uh, we went and I danced in the church. I grew up singing, all those things. Um, and while growing up in church, I... Uh, experience a lot of church hurt. I've seen a lot of things, mm. especially like being a part of the first family. So yeah. see a lot of things. I see a lot of uh, people's real character. I see a lot of how my dad carries things and how, you know, even just seeing them outside of church and then in church. Um, so all those things like changed the way um, I saw like church. And then going to school, I didn't meet people who were in church. No mm. one was really like vocal about that. Yeah. And so since people weren't really vocal about that, I was just kind of like, all right, so I'm just going to kind of just fall in with the crowd and what everybody mm. else is doing. Um, and so that resulted in me like just really trying to be a people pleaser, kind of yeah. like trying to fit in. I can see. And with me trying to do that, it resulted in me um, really just being – um, really just being someone who just was not, I wasn't authentic. I just wasn't being myself. Yeah. Um, and with all that also growing up, like I grew up with like also being like really the dark skinned girl mm-hmm. that really didn't fit in cause everybody else was lighter. And then also like people weren't really, that dark skin wasn't really a thing. I was getting called many different <laughs> names. <laughs> and so, um, that resulted in me being very angry. Um, mm-hmm. and so I was like, how do I, how do I fit in with this crowd? I, they don't like me. Okay, they're not gonna like me if I tell them who I am outside yeah, of this. Yeah. Um. But then they're also they also already don't like me because of my skin color. Yeah. And so I started to defend myself, and so I did fight a lot growing up. <laughs> yeah. Um. Because I, I, I that one thing was what how I got mm-hmm. attention. How people started um, really gravitating towards me because it was like he was either gonna get beat up or he's gonna be my friend um, <laughs> <laughs> or they was gonna get me to beat up the people they not cool yeah, with I got you and so I would like be a, yeah essentially a bully like I would really mm-hmm. like just be public enemy and um, but I was very always outgoing always the person that was just um, talking to people I was very bubbly Um, but I just, I don't know. I just never knew how to fit in. And so growing up, that's how I was living this double life, like going to school one way. I'm like acting like I'm from the hood. I'm from the suburbs. Y'all have springs. (laughs) (laughs) And, and then like coming home and going to church and being active in the church and not having friends even there because we couldn't get too close with people in church. Cause it was like, they wasn't all the way like, I don't know, like they, it just then my parents knowing them how, how they are and just you know all those things so yeah. um it just i i really was just i guess it's just always was search for friends search mm. for someone to be my that's my people that those are the people i feel close with mm-hmm. and um yeah then i came to christ let's go forth <laughs> I, I came to christ in college i uh went off to college i was in this relationship um before college right before college that mm-hmm. lasted about like my whole high school 
career. Um, and that relationship just caused me to, it, I went through a lot in that relationship. Um, and once I finally let go of that relationship, like I went, I straight went, I went straight off to college and then I was like, I don't have no one. Like I'm mm -hmm. going to a college. I, I'm going to a city. I've never been. Everybody's like Albany, Albany, what? Albany, New York. <laughs> <laughs> so no one knew Albany, Georgia. Yeah. And then, um, I didn't have any friends. Nobody from my school was really going there. I knew some people that was going there, but it, we weren't like cool. Like we weren't like that, those type of close friends. Um, and so I went there and I literally like was like, I don't know what to do. And I remember seeing on like when you first like get to, like the college, they have this thing where you go on like Twitter and yeah. you're like, oh, like you get, follow all the pages, like the little ASU 23 pages. Mm -hmm. And so I did. And there was a girl who was like she was like she has a mentorship called Women of God Come Forth. And she was like, y'all want to come to church? Like, I'll help you all get church and all these things. So um, and I was like, that's all I know is church. Yeah. And so I was like, well, let me, I, I guess I, I guess I'll go with you. Y'all, y'all seem cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so that's when I started getting to church and literally from there, like I would go to parties on Saturday, but I kept telling myself, you're going to go, you, you've been out since 5 a.m., but you're going to get up in a couple hours. Yeah. Um, and, and then I was also, and I was friends with people in the church and I was friends with these gr group of girls that I met. And I, I guess me constantly being in the church something was pulling me away from this group of girls and it kept pulling me away and kept pulling me away. And so essentially I just stopped hanging out with them. And once I stopped doing that, like a lot, uh, it was just like, as if like overnight, like, okay, I want to live for God. And literally after that, after that happened overnight, it was just like, everything went up from there, skyrocket. Mm -hmm. Like I, we started having dreams. God speaking to me. I'm yeah. like, I'm eat, sleep, breathing my Bible. Like yeah. I fall asleep, my Bible on my chest. I wake up reading my Bible. Like, you yeah. know, that first, when you first come to God, you just on fire. Yeah. <laughs> so that happened. And now it's just been up ever since. That's now up I'm here. Since. Man, that is um, a powerful testimony. There's a lot of things that you said that I'm going to have to dial back into yeah, it. We we're going to reverse it a little <laughs> bit, and we're going to dial into some of these uh, things. Mm. One of the things that you mentioned, okay, so the preacher kid, yes. right, always in the church. Yeah. But growing up, you had church hurt. How much did church hurt have to do with a lot of the things that happened in your life. So was it you couldn't find friends in the church? Was it you just seeing a lifestyle in church that was contrary to something else? And then you kind of mm -hmm. was like, well, I really want to do this thing, but nobody's living right. Like, how, how much did it impact? Let's just start there because okay. we're going to get into a lot of stuff yeah. that you talked about. So how much did church hurt affect you growing up? all the way up until, you know, college, till you found your place in Christ? So, Church Hurt started, it, it, it affected my life a lot. Mm -hmm. And how is because I wasn't only just hurt by people in the church. Church Hurt came home with us. Oh, okay. And so, it was like seeing the lifestyle of my parents mm -hmm. one way and then coming home and they would argue and they would fight mm -hmm. and they would be going through a divorce and it would spoil out into the congregation, into the pulpit, into mm. things like that. Yeah. And that hurt me because I'm hearing like, okay, like the man's the head of the household and these things like that. And this is how um, a mother and father should love each other. And then seeing um, that it wasn't, it wasn't real. Once it got, once we came to church, it, we left in separate cars. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When we get to the church, it's like, you know, they're in the front, first lady and pastor, but we get home and it was a lot of arguments. Like, we don't even fights. know each other. Like, yeah, don't like, want to be around each other. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I can see definitely, especially how it it can affect you because, number one, you're, you're the child. Yeah. Right? So then you may have had things like, okay, well, I'm seeing something totally different. And y'all yeah. y'all are being double-sided. So now seeing home so there seems like there could have been like a little bit of brokenness in the home mm -hmm. not having some things that probably you would desire or you would love to have in family yeah so 
growing up, even going into, because you mentioned about going into a relationship with a guy in high school, yeah. right? So was some, of, was some of what you've seen as a child growing up as a PK, preacher kid for people who don't know what PK <laughs> is, all right? So growing up as a preacher kid, was some of uh, what you didn't see in the home have an effect on relationship even in high school? Because you're still a teenager, you don't know a whole yeah. lot about relationships, but you're just trying, you're you know, now trying to figure this thing out, but you, but yet you don't have an example to go by. Yeah. So how how was that? That was, so like, it, even, even growing up, like before even that relationship, I was like dating guys and girls. Mm -hmm. So the, even in that, like, I didn't, I, I didn't, I see how a man and a woman treat each other. Maybe yep. it'll be different with a girl. That mm. was the same thing. Y'all, it was the same thing. Y'all don't, well, I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, and then um i started getting this and th this relationship was like the most like serious relationship the, the, yeah the, all your thing was like okay i'm a yeah. kid puppy love. but yeah. Yeah, yeah and so this relationship this was puppy love too but it was okay now like we got it now it's like we're talking about giving my virginity away like now it's we're talking about all these other things that's going on and so um so with this person like it was it was a i didn't understand how i was supposed to be loved Mm. And so this person would cheat on me all the time. This person would have like girls calling my phone. It was a lot of stuff going wow. on. Um, and he even had like, he had a baby on me with this girl and I still stayed cause I didn't understand. In high school. In high school. Wow. This is happening in high school. And it's actually two times this happened. Two babies in two high school? Two babies. In, okay. <laughs> okay. I know it's crazy, but it, that's how it was. And I didn't know how to like, okay, I'm just like, nah, this is not how I'm supposed to be loved. And so I, I, with my frustration, we would just fight. Like I'll fist fight him. Like we yeah. would be fist fighting at his mama yeah. house. Um, and with that, like I never understood. I, I, just, I just didn't understand. I understood that's how you're supposed to argue and fight and then y'all be cool again. Cause that's what I saw. Mm. Um, and so that really, that that's how that like really affected my relationship and then yeah. it it that it didn't stop at their relationship i went to college and got relationships and even though i was i came to christ like it was still like that 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 not i didn't i didn't think i was going to find someone that was going to be in like a actual church guy i didn't yeah. think i was going to find someone that actually like actually loved the lord yeah and be serious about it because that guy was in the church mm. and he was a preacher's kid too yeah yeah so yeah yeah so that's um man that's it's a lot to think about first and foremost um and sorry that you had to go through that thing and i and i know you know it, it may sound like it's cliche and mm. and you probably was like ah you know i'm over it now however um sometimes there are triggers now i don't know if you've been through uh had mentors or counseling and things like that for these things mm. but sometimes there can be triggers that happen even as you maybe start to explore new relationships like in your future those could be triggers to other things that lead you back to where you were before yeah. right so i'm sorry that you had to go through that um it just especially at a young age yeah. right and what i also hear is just a lack of identity yeah. like maybe there was not the, the pouring into you like you are beautiful you are love you are a child of god you are you know all of these different things these affirmations that are necessary for our children and it also speaks to um how things can transpire if we as parents in our positions no matter what it is right whether we're preachers or whether we're full-time entrepreneurs or whatever the case may be yeah. it also speaks to the importance of creating stability in your home and actually being an example yeah. because what we do goes beyond us right and some of the stuff that you had to go through was because what you didn't necessarily have so you m mimicked or imitated what you've seen and you felt like well this is how it should be right yeah. And then as you continue to grow, you start realizing, okay, this is this is not it. Yeah. Even to the to the point where you're saying, well, if the man won't treat, then maybe a female would do it, right? right? And even that, 
is a is a curious you you go to just a curious mind because we we can be curious mm-hmm. right but then there there's a there's a certain type of curious that's like um i see what it's about but then there's a there's another curious that's when you're lost in curious and you don't have the identity it go it leads you to a whole nother place yeah so uh again just thank you for being vulnerable and sharing okay. that because there may be some other people right now who are still who are dealing with that very thing that you just talked about. Yeah. So the um, the other part that you mentioned and talked about was because you were a darker skin. Yeah. So how how were friends? Did that did that start in high school as well? Did that start in the that church? Was all my life, all your life. Yeah. So in church and in high school, or just not in... just like all all through school, through like elementary, middle, okay, and high school. So just through school, yeah, you, there were kids that would just would pick on you because of your skin tone. Yeah, like how how did how did that make you feel? Let's just say from a nine year old, third grade, or you know whatever grade you're in. Yeah, how did that make you feel? As a third grader, seeing people just talk about your skin tone because you can't do anything about your skin right. tone. Right. I. It made me feel like I life wasn't worth living because I didn't understand. Like, there's nothing I could do about it except for go away. Mm. And seeing that everybody are like it was it was other dark skinned people, but then the dark skinned people would be. Like, bullying me? Like, we look the same way. Wow. But they, I guess, like, okay, we're a little, I'm a little shade. It was always like, oh, look, put your arms together. I'm a little shade lighter. It, it was like, as if, like, they wanted, oh, well, I get bullied, but I want to feel a little bit better than she is. Jeez. At least I'm not as dark as she. And so it made me feel like, I like, it made me feel like no one. Like, because growing up, also, like, Everybody has, like, their little crushes, their little boyfriends, like, yeah. and if, like, you know, sometimes, like, if the boy here, you got a crush on him, he's cute, like, oh, what's up? Like, you know, it, it's it's a little cute, but when it was like, oh, if I said I had a crush on a guy, it was like, ew, like, she, mm. you know, and so then it, it made me feel like, okay, like, am I, am I not, I'm not pretty, I'm not attractive, mm. like, um, and growing up, that's what I thought, and so... I only hung out with guys like in so or like a homegirl way because I never knew that. Even now, like when guys tell me like me now, I'd be like, like it just kind of blows me because mm. I never, I never when I was growing up, I never got that type of attention. Yeah. And so like, and I was always like the homegirl, and and I started dressing like them. I started dressing like a tomboy. I started like carrying myself that way yeah. and so like you were saying about like not getting that poured that pour in like oh you're beautiful you're this like and not saying that they purposely didn't do it yeah, when I was growing yeah, up right but like it just it just wasn't really you know and also was the only girl I grew up with two brothers so mm-hmm. I really didn't know how really to be feminine um and so that really like affected me like growing up and so me not knowing how to be feminine Growing up, only having, like, male figures except yeah. besides my mom. Um, but she's being busy and whatever, you know. And then going to school and hearing that, oh, you're ugly because of your skin tone. I Like, how do I live? How I can't live. I'm, I can't be myself anywhere. Right. Right. So, yeah, that's... it was really sad. It, it really, like, had me, like, I don't know. It, it A lot of times I did, I did just want to just end my life because I didn't know, like, what to do and I and again like not knowing your identity you want to please people and so I'm like finding we used to go I remember like um we used to like find like lightning cream like when I was growing up like that was like a thing like bleaching your skin or using lightning cream and Mm -hmm. things like that or I just think like okay if I stay inside I'll be a little lighter but I like playing outside so all of those things like had me really like I it 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 all messed up with all messed me up with my identity. Yeah, yeah. and my mindset and how I view myself. Yeah. Quick message to, according to everything that you just said, a quick message to every parent with a child. I don't care what skin color you are: white, black, orange, green, purple. Teach your children how to respect others. It don't just have to be adults, but how to respect the people that's next to them 
in their classrooms, in the stores, on the playground, because you don't know. They don't know. This is why you have to teach it. Sometimes they don't know that they're being rude. Sometimes they don't know that they're offending someone. Sometimes they don't know that they're actually pushing someone to the edge of suicide. Parents, teach your children how to respect others, how to be a friend, how to love and the importance behind what it is um, that they do on the playground, in the classroom, because it matters. And you as a parent, if you don't do that, your child can be doing something and then another child goes and do something and you don't know anything about it, that your child had something to do with the decision that another child made. And this is for elementary school, middle school, high school, college. It has to start now. It has to start now. So, um, again, Courtney, that is, that's a lot. Yeah. That, that is a lot. But I appreciate uh, your, your strength and where you are today to be able to have this conversation, to yeah. be able to talk about the things that you've went through. And one of my prayers, as I'm hearing you uh, talk, and I pray that all who listen have this prayer too, or a prayer similar, is that um, God continues to give you the strength and the boldness to tell your story, but also just confirm how precious you are to him. Because that, that's the most important thing. And I think you're doing a really good job right now in as you are finding or found your identity in Christ, you're doing a really good job on staying the course. So as you stay the course and stay faithful in your relationship with God, then God continues to provide all the things that you need and continue to comfort you through this journey. Again, because even now, as some people may listen to you and be like, well, she's well-spoken. She sounds like she's pretty good. But again, it don't take much to trigger someone to go back to a place that they once were or to start feeling like they felt before. Yeah. And this is why, one of the reasons why this platform is this. So people can hear other people's story and make some type of life adjustment, whether that be in their own homes, whether that be in their own life, whether that be for parenting their children, no matter what the situation may be, they can listen to these stories, listen to these testimonies, and their eyes can begin to be open so that things can begin to change so we can move forward the way we need to move forward. Um, because believe it or not, there's still division amongst people based on race based on color, yeah. based on if you're darker or if you're lighter or if you're white or if you're black. You right. can get this job or we, you can't get this job. We're going to hire you or we're not. We're going to give you this money or we're not. Right. There's, that stuff still exists. Um, but again, I, I appreciate your vulnerability and being able to share all of that. All of that. So, But I want to continue to navigate up until where you are because again I feel like people need to hear this yeah. because it's like your story is helping somebody else already I believe it your story is already helping somebody else it's helping another beautiful black girl with cornrows with braids with kinky hair it's helping that young lady right now with her confidence and so that she can look in the mirror and say, I am beautiful. I can't do nothing about how God created me. He gave me this, so therefore it's unique. And I have to wear it knowing that it's unique, not being afraid of what God has given. Because that, essentially that's what, it, that's what it is when we, and it's not your fault. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things, as we've been talking about for the past few minutes, that kind of go into play with this, but... You can't do anything but accept what God gives you yeah. and make the best of it. Yeah. And that skin tone, he gave you that. You can wear it and make the best of it. Somebody's going to know that your face 
not just by the podcast, mm-hmm. but wherever you step out somewhere, they're going to be like, oh, that's Courtney. I know her. She has this, this, and this, right? Mm-hmm. So you're going to overcome and all of that. Again, I, I'm in a sentimental moment <laughs> right now. But I just want to encourage you. I want to empower you um, where you are. Just, just stay the course. Stay the course. Yeah. All right. So um, going through, so you got childhood, you got church, you have high school. So your elementary comes up. Mm-hmm. You've been picked on. High school comes up, you got relationships, you got guys having kids in high school. So that right there just speaks to what goes on in high school in this time. It's a little bit more than, because it was happening when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. Um, Even I had a child when I was in high school. But for your situation, just hearing your situation for you personally, Mm -hmm. having to go through that with two different guys, that's... Crazy to me. Yeah. And then, so now you transition from uh, relationships and you're, going, you're still going through identity. Mm-hmm. You fast forward, you go to college, and nobody's talking about church yeah. when you get to college. But you still have a, a root, a foundation in church. So I, I do feel like that is a somewhat good part yeah. on, on your parents' behalf um, for at least giving you that foundation in yeah. church. So when you go to college, you're looking for friends, but it's hard to find friends when you've been bullied all through school. Yeah. Right. So now this has also led you into just indulging in everything else. Talk a little bit about that, because now you're still going through this uh, just this identity crisis, like not knowing who I am. And because of all this trail of tears and shame and all this other kind of stuff, I feel like I have to fit in. Talk a little bit about about that and the part where you met the young lady and you kind of transitioned to, to where you are now. So talk about the identity crisis, just not being able to find friends and fitting in. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, yeah. Um, so you really, like, only become friends with people when who's ever in your major. Mm -hmm. Um, especially like when you're starting out in like something like nursing or, um, music education, you automatically start like doing classes like that's into that goes into like what you are essentially going to get your degree in. Um, and so we were always like in chorus, like always. And so I became friends with these girls in chorus friends, Mm -hmm. with these girls in chorus. And, um, and, at, and in, also in college, like, everything's at your fingertips. Like, you can find some way to get alcohol, some way to get weed, some way to get to a party. There is some way you're going to get somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I could not find no way to get to church until the lady came. <laughs> but, and so, um, yeah. And so these friends that I made, like, they were, you know, they're happy. They're away from home. Like, let's go turn up. And so we were always at a party. We were always somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually crazy because I also became friends with people inside the gospel choir. They wasn't taking me to church. They was taking me to parties. And so um, even then, like, so it's like, okay, we're all going to these parties together. We're like, we're finding some way to get there. It's always something at our fingertips for us to do. Yeah. Um, And as I'm also like going to church and hanging out with these friends and going here, it was kind of like that thing, like a man can't serve two masters. Like you got to choose one or the other. And, um, and it was kind of, that's that's what it felt like. And it wasn't a thing where God was like, you're going to serve me now. But it yeah, was yeah. like, <laughs> it was like, um, I'm going to give you this feeling and and you're going to realize more and more that this is worth more than what you're doing. Yeah. And it was like, because I was spending $20 to get to the party. Like you get in the party, first you got to wait this long line, you get a free ticket, then, yeah. you, then they wait. It, it's just yeah. a lot. <laughs> and so... And then I end up paying when I get to the door just to get in this party that lasts X amount of hours. People sweating. They don't give us no food. It's just alcohol being passed around. Yeah. To I go to church. I get fed. We go out to church. We find something to do, like something fun to do. Um, I'm getting a good word. And it just all, like, brought me back to what I was raised on. Like, 
that you know that I, that I have gifts that God placed inside of me that yes. needs to be used. And that was another thing. Like having something that God placed inside of you mm-hmm. um, that you know needs to be used and you're not using it, you're going to feel away. Like yes. it's like I haven't sung in a long time. Hello? Me 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 like I'm over yeah, here yeah, like yeah. do I get do I still got my singing voice? Yeah. Um and so all these things like uh, these these friends having these friends and um, then finding my way at church, it was just a, a tug and pull. And so when I was scrolling on Twitter and I saw the girl post, mm-hmm. um, she picked us up. She picked us all up. They essentially, then they uh, eventually had uh, a, a church bus to come get us. Yeah. Um, and so we would go to church with her, and that was real friends because we would go and I would get poured into. Yep. Uh, then it started to be like a mentorship. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a many other, it was three other girls, it was three mentors and the rest of us were just like probably like freshmen, sophomores. Um, and we would go to church with them. We would hang out. They, they would also go, they also did go to Albany State. So some of them lived on campus and we would go to their room. We had nothing to do. Like yeah. there was a, there was an alternative now. At first it was like, okay, this is my, only, I don't got nothing to do. I'm bored. Mm-hmm. This is at my fingertips. But now there's an alternative and I was okay with the alternative because we was eating. I, yeah. I, I knew I was going to go out. I was going to eat. Because <laughs> you were <a> foodie. <laughs> and so, and then we was also like, we're, we're talking about having meaningful conversations. We're yeah. sharing testimonies. I'm yeah. seeing them talk about how good God is. God did this. This is this. And they're telling me, they're teaching me so many things about spirituality and yeah. uh, just about what God can give you and just about the gifts that God placed inside of you and just yeah. being a woman in college and a young woman and seeing that they had many different testimonies that was like wow and and then they were pulling me away from things that i didn't even know were going to be like harmful to me until like until i really like looked more into it and i was like oh this is this not something i should be a part of yeah um and so when i stopped being friends with this group like they were angry like they were mad um, so to the point that they try to fight me, yeah. like that, like, you don't want to be our friend no more. You acting weird. And I'm like, mm. no, I just, and it, and, and, it, and it wasn't like a thing. I was like, cut off. It was just kind of like, I just stopped talking to them. Like, yeah. Hey, I see y'all. Hey, bye. Yeah. Um, and not and, necessarily engaging, indulging yeah. to the things that they was doing right. because you got another group now that's right. real friends and they're empowering you. They're encouraging you. And the other the other powerful thing about this group mm-hmm. is they're actually living yeah. what they say. They were like in that and this other friend these other friends, they were like it kinda like I guess it made them upset. Like, oh now I feel like I'm you like you better than us or like you know, and it wasn't that. It was just like I just felt something pulling me. And I knew it was God, but it wasn't like it was it was a thing I kinda had to just, okay, God, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and so once I once I just start hanging out with these girls and I start going to this church and it just really changed, like it changed the trajectory of my my uh of my relationship with God. It changed my the trajectory of my identity. Like that's when I start really figuring out this is who I am. Cause if yeah. I never I would never have realize oh i got the spiritual gift or that um god placed this inside of me or i wouldn't understand that that dream i had was from god like at first it's just like i'm hearing and seeing one thing but now i'm i got okay now i got i understand i got context to it i have substance yeah. to it i understand what's going on it's yeah. not just this i see colors i see yeah. this person i see this like yeah. um and so that that group really like it really changed a lot for me. Even though I'd even stay in that group for long, it 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 was like you know it's always like some things are for a season, to and th- that was for a season and it brought me like it really like really helped me be who I am right now. Yeah. So shout out to was it woman of God come forth? Yes, woman of God come forth. Shout out to woman of God come <laughs> forth. Uh, they, are they still? Um. It. It's not, it kinda, not, yeah, it kind of dialed down, down, down a little so, bit. So was this like first year of college, second year? Because you're, you're getting ready to graduate now. Yeah. So was this so early? So this was first, first year, second year, and then it dialed down like my third year. And mm-hmm. I was, it, that was, that really like, it was good because after that, that's when I started doing like ministry on campus. That's yeah. when I like um, created an organization. So it that's was good. like, and then I guess it dialed down because the head leader, like the head, like the one who put all this at the visionary, she yeah. like uh graduated. Yeah. So it was kinda like, you know, 
I don't know. It's just kind of dialed down a little bit. What, what's her What's her name? Oh, her name's Jonisha. Joe Jonisha. Yes. Jonisha. Jo- Shout out Jonisha. Jonisha, if you watch this, look at a product that you that <laughs> came from your ministry. This is a product of your ministry. But that yeah. that is so good. Shout out to woman woman of God come forth. Yes. Um, because that that was a pivotal moment an interaction and encounter in your life that yeah. got you to where you are so even when they moved on and it didn't you know continue yeah you still were able to continue because not only did you have community not only did you have friends and an environment and an atmosphere that was conducive for you to continue to grow but it also brought identity yeah it also brought identity yeah so that is so good man this this has been um this has been really good. Yeah. I feel like I, I can go about another hour and twenty minutes, <laughs> but I don't want to make it that long. That'll be like a whole part two or whatever. But what so let's talk about now. Let's fast forward into where you are now. You spoke a little bit about earlier when we first started about what your expectations are. You kinda what you want to do, traveling the world and things like that. Um, how do you think that's going to look necessarily for for you um so i know god like he showed me that that's what i'm gonna do is travel the world preach the gospel minister to all different types of people Mm -hmm. um and i and and also i know he placed inside of me to be entrepreneur he showed me the whole dream for my business and so um and now like i i believe that God is, he's been moving me in that direction. Like I have been getting calls to preach here, there. And so, um, now it just, it, it looks like, it's like that thing where you know what you're supposed to be doing and you know what he has for you, but you got to be patient. So I kind of in the place like, God, come on. You told me this promise back in 2019. We in 2023. They talking about (laughs) the world ending on it. (laughs) And so I'm like, Lord. Um, but right now it's looking like just like, I just got to trust him. Mm-hmm. It's looking like I just have to complete what I, what he put me first to start. Like right yes. now he, he put me in college, like let's complete that. Yeah. Then we can move on to, you know, I, I'm, I am putting you here, there. I'm letting you speak here and there, but the, I, I'm in, you're not, I can see it's like being a thing. Like I'm not, I'm mean, not fully ready yet. It's some yeah. things I gotta, I'm still learning. Even in yes. this internship, I'm like, yo, like I thought I was past this, but this uh uh-uh. and so it's things I'm still learning and it, it's looking like just like I kind of have to just like step out on water yeah I kind of have to just trust him yeah. and believe that like this is this is what he has for me and I have to believe that also that that is not too big and it's not something that just like it was not it's not just some imagination but it's something that like God literally like placed inside of me that like yeah. it's a real vision yeah it was a real thing that you saw yeah and constantly he confirms it yeah and he's just like you just have to trust me and mm-hmm. I, it's crazy because i was just talking about this a couple of days ago and then i get then i get a call someone's like start prophesying me on the phone and she's like i just see you going here i see you playing i see i'm like i was just talking about how god you take a little bit too late <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. um and so it's just so i i, I say this to say like I want to say to whoever's listening, like God gave you a vision. He gave you, he told you what you're going to, what you're supposed to be doing. He showed you like what you are created to do, who you're created to be. And if it hasn't happened yet, God is still preparing you. Like I am that one. I'm very impatient. I'm like, God, come on now. Like I, even with my husband, I'm like, Lord, at the time, even I'm like 22. So, <laughs> but Um, but believe God for, believe God that that is for you. Believe what he said. He said it. He's not, he's not a man that shall lie. And I think that's just our human nature to see God as how we see other people. Oh, they don't fulfill their promises. Oh, they're like promise breakers Mm -hmm. or they're not going to fall through. They flake. Yeah. But God is like, he stands 10 toes behind what he says. And if you like even feel worried, like weary or like worried about it, ask God to confirm it again. Yeah. Listen, I'm the one that asked God 10 times, God, is that you for real? I'm Thomas. Like, let me see. No, let me come here. Let me see because I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's good. And something that you just said before we get ready to close out. Um, that I, I felt was so powerful. And I'm going to just re 
paraphrase what you said. It's basically see people how God sees them. Mm. And I feel like that is something that could have been done better um, from your childhood all the way to now for you. Mm. And it's amazing that you're able to say that and not have the same spirit that those individuals um, were led, yeah. you know, cause them to do the things to you. So that's uh, powerful, man. Thank you so much for, again, Thank you. for your vulnerability and sharing your testimony, your story. Uh, I'm excited to see uh, your food network, <laughs> food, the food network ministry and everything that you do, though. And another thing that we talked, you talked about gifts and things. Mm -hmm. Don't think I didn't hear singing. Yes. dancing <laughs> like hey if you don't do it somewhere else do it at home do it in the room wherever you at mm -hmm. just continue to do that because that, that is something else that god has given you yeah that you can do in your alone time as worship to him yeah so continue to sing continue to dance um i was going to ask you if you had any final words but you had already given it to him <laughs> and but that's good though so um but is there anything else that you would like to share to to just young black girls? Um, to young black girls, I would like to share that your beauty it 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 really what's it really what really matters is what's on the inside. Um, cause once I like was good on the inside, like once I felt good about myself on the inside, I didn't really care about how other people felt about me. Like what. I started taking care of how I looked on the outside. And I didn't really care about what other people said about me. Like, if I, I realized about myself that I have a genuine heart. Like, I am very genuine. I, like, very passionate. And I, 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 I take pride in those. I like that, that that's, that, because you, can, you can't meet a lot of people that's genuine. You meet a lot yes. of people that, you don't meet a lot of people that is passionate about something and they're passionate about who they are. And so, Find that thing that's in the inside of you that that can't nobody replicate. Can't nobody take my how genuine I am and put it on them. Like you are gonna see it. And so I say, really, whatever that's the thing that you know that no one else can take from you that's inside of you, start to start to really grow that thing. And then you'll start to take care of yourself. Then you'll start to love yourself. Then you'll start to see that. I really am beautiful. Like, oh, girl, you look cute today. Like, I be doing that. I be hugging <laughs> myself up now because I realize, like, I can pour into myself. When I'm looking for others so much, I can pour that back in. I can pour that into myself. And it is, and even though, and I now I thank God that I found people who pour into me. And I thank God that even now my mom is more open. Like, she's she been pouring into me. Um, but yeah, find that thing that's inside that's inside of you that you can that you can just be without without any question without a doubt like you can who you can be like just be that person um and be free in being that person um and then you'll you'll start to see it replicate you'll start to see it show like and you really start i really like who i am i like me <laughs> yeah that's that is so good um she also has she talked about entrepreneurship as well so before we close out she has a clothing uh, thing that she's doing. Listen, we're going to help her build that. But what I would like for you guys to do is go ahead and head over to Free J L. That's F R E E J A E L dot com. We're going to put all the information in the description. I want you guys to go and support um, what she's doing. She's she's doing a phenomenal job, being consistent in school and having a vision and a mission. So what I would like for us to be able to do is to pour into her entrepreneurship in this way. So uh, check out the links in the description. Head over there. Go ahead and buy it up, shop it up, run it up, whatever it is. But we're going to help her build that platform so that she can walk into entrepreneurship and do food and uh, ministry. But thank you guys for tuning in. Listen to another powerful episode uh, with Courtney. We're so blessed and thankful that she was able to share a testimony with us today. But until next time, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. <laughs>